They want to go over a couple of examples from uh, section 6.1, graphing linear inequalities in two variables. We'll have a couple of generic problems and then a word problem at the end. Uh, first question is uh, 6b uh, on page 304. We are to graph the solution set for each in linear inequality. So it says here, uh, we're looking for the set of xy um, such that x plus 6y minus 14 is less than 0. Um, x and y must be integers. So usually what you want to do is you want to start with the associated equation. This is what we'll have. Notice the equal sign there. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this into slope intercept form. So um, we'll subtract x and add 14 on either side of the equation. So 6y is equal to negative x plus 14. Then you proceed to divide both sides by 6. And so y is going to be equal to negative 1 over 6x plus 14 over 6. And the problem, as you can see here, is that 14 over 6 is not a very good y-intercept for us to graph because it will be somewhere around there. So we want to be more precise. Therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to find an x value such that when we substitute it into the equation, it would um, be divisible by 6, and then our y uh, variable, sorry, our y coordinate will also be a whole number, and, and we get a nice point that way. So we're going to let x equals 2. And some of you guys must be wondering, uh, why is it 2 and why is it not something else? There's other numbers you can choose, but the idea here is you want to find a number such that when you multiply it by negative 1, right, negative 1, and then add 14, it becomes divisible by 6. So you can see in this case, I have negative 2, 6 plus 14 over 6, and the result will be 12 over 6, which of course is actually just 2. So we have to point to 2. So 2, 2 is going to be a point on our line, and we know that our slope is equal to negative 1 over 6. Therefore, if we were to graph this, I'll graph my point 2, 2 right here, 2, 2. And I will run down one space, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's my second point. And I will draw a dash line in this case because it says less than and not equal to. So here's my dash line. Okay. So be nice and careful because it is our first example ever. <laughs> so here it is. And the second part of this after you graph your lines, that's the first part is you have to graph the line. And the second part will be for you to find out does the solution belong to the bottom of this line or to the top of the line? Okay. And to do that, we'll test a point. In this case, we'll test the point 0, 0. And the reason why we want to test 0, 0 is because it is very easy to substitute into the inequality. If the point 0, 0 is on your line proper, then you have to choose another point. But in this case, we can actually substitute it in directly. So here's my... Oops show my work here x plus 6y minus 14 less than 0 and when you test a point you always want to go to the original inequality that was in your question there so substitution and if you evaluate this you get negative 14 is less than 0 and that of course is true so therefore your solution will be on the bottom of that line okay so to show that, you will dot it in your solution, actual dots. And the reason why you do this instead of shading in the entire side like we did in class for some of the examples, once again, because our solution set is the integer, okay? Whereas if it's whole number, you always want to just do the one quadrant. And in this case, it is integer, so we have to shade in all of these or dot in all of these. But then you realize that this is probably not very practical to do on every question. So on a quiz or test or even some of your homework question, what you most likely going to do, I'm going to show you that in a second, is, you know, draw some dots. 
like I'm doing right now. And then the, for the rest, you can just write dotted and then draw some arrows, indicate the direction of your dots. And that would be sufficient for your answer. I'm going to stop this right now and I'm going to continue with the next example, uh, 6F, in just a moment. So we'll continue with our second example, 6F. Uh, once again, we're graphing the solution set for each linear inequality. This time around, we're looking for the set of xy such that 4x minus 5y is less than 10. And this time around, the difference is that we want x and y to be real numbers and not integers. So there will be a slight change there. Okay. So once again, we want to start with the associated equation. This time around, I'm going to have 4x minus 5y is equal to 10. Okay, note the equal sign here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. And so as you can see, I will get negative 5y is equal to negative 4x plus 10. And because I'm trying to isolate y, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. There we are. So what I'm going to end up with is y equals 4 over 5x. And then I have 10 divided by negative 5, which will be uh, minus 2. So unlike the previous question, we have actually a very nice y-intercept. So this time around, I know that the point um, 0, negative 2 will be on our line. So as such, we can plot it right here. And I know that the slope is going to be 4 fifths. Okay, so I'm going to go up 4 spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4, and run a 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You draw my second point. And afterwards, I'm going to proceed to draw a straight line through these two points. And what you notice is that this time around, we also have a dashed line and not a full line. And the reason is because just like the previous example, this is also a less than and not equal to inequality. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this line here. So well it's on the other side. The second part is to decide which side I'm going to shade in, and this time I'm going to once again test the point 0, 0 because it is not on the line itself. Okay, so once again, when you test, you want to test against the original inequality. Substitute in my zeros. And you can see that 0 would be less than 10. So that's a valid inequality. I'm going to shade above the line here because that's the side that 0, 0 is on. So I'm going to pick up my highlighter. I'm just going to highlight this side. So you can just do your best in your highlighting so long as we know that you know what the solution is, something like that. Okay. So that's a little bit simpler example than 6b because of the need to find a special point. Whereas this time around, all I need to do is graph the y-intercept because it is a whole number. So it kind of goes by a question-to-question -question basis. I'm going to stop it right now and I'm going to come back and we're going to work on that word problem number 8. We're looking at number 8, the word problem. If you read through the question, you will see that they're going to purchase $50 practice jerseys and $85 sticks on a $3,000 budget. So part A of the question asks us to write in linear inequality to represent the situation. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to set up our variables y for the jerseys and x for the sticks. Okay. 
So the total cost of the jerseys will be $50 times Y, the number of jersey that you will purchase, plus $85 times X, where $85, of course, is the cost of the stick, and X is the number that you're going to purchase, and that must be less than or equal to $3,000, because that's our total budget. The restrictions on the variables is that X and Y must both be whole numbers. They cannot be integers or real numbers. And the reason why that is, is because if you have a real number uh, for X and Y, you can have an irrational number of sticks, like pi sticks and uh, root two number of jerseys, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then if you have integers, you can have a negative number of sticks and jerseys. And um, that's not good either. So whole number is our number set of choice here. And that's all you need to do for part A. For part B, it says to use your inequality to model the situation graphically. And to do that, we have set up a grid here. You will notice that I only have the positive sides of the x and y axes. And the reason that is, is because we have whole numbers, so we don't need the negative sides. And what we're going to need to do here is to put this equation into slope-intercept form. Okay. So once again, we're working with the associated equation, just like the generic not-word problems that we had before. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 85x from both sides first. Okay. So I have 50y is equal to negative 85x plus 3,000, and then I'll proceed to decide, divide both sides by 50, just like that. So y is going to be equal to negative, um, let's reduce quickly here, uh, 17 over 10x if you were to divide both um, 85 and 50 uh, by Five, that's what you'll get but don't forget that you also need to reduce the 3,000 as well and 3,000 divided by 50 would be 60 so that's the equation that we should graph notice that this time around we do have less than or equal to so we're going to draw in a solid line and not a dotted line this time and here's my y-intercept of 0 60 and then I have a slope of negative 17 over 10, which is a little bit harder to graph. And there's no real good way to finding a whole number um, somewhere else in the graph because your your um, axes are scaled. So you're just going to have to do your best and, and guess uh, and estimate a little bit. So 5, 10, 15. So 17 will be somewhere over here. And you can move over 10. So the next point should be somewhere there. And so we're going to draw a line through these two points. Point one, point two. Okay, just do your best in this regard, and we have something that looks like that. So once again, do we do need to test the point though? So this time around, I'm going to test the point zero zero because it is not on the graph proper. And once again, you do want to test against the original inequality that you made up in part A. So here's fifty zero plus eighty five. 0 and that's going to be less than 3000 well is it c0 is less than or equal to 3000 and that of course is true so i'm going to shade on the side that 0 0 is on which is this side and that is to say i'm actually going to dot this in because once again uh, we're looking at whole numbers so it's not continuous the solution will be discrete now some of you Maybe wondering, oh, aren't you supposed to dot in 10 of these dots? But, mm, I, I guess you don't really need to because um, that will just make things more complicated than needs to be. So this is probably okay if you just went ahead and dot it in like this. Okay. So these are all the different combination of jerseys and sticks that you can buy. For example, you can buy zero jerseys and steals zero sticks and you will have uh, less than three thousand dollars you can buy only jerseys you can buy 60 jerseys and no sticks that's also three thousand dollars but that's not going to
be a very good hockey team. So a reasonable solution will be something around here. So if you were to answer part C quickly here, um, any of these points will do. So um, just determine one of these points. Let's go with um, you probably want more sticks and jerseys. Uh, let's go with a point like that. So if you went ahead and purchased 20 jerseys and 20 sticks, just to make sure that it does fit within the budget, right? Because that will be good. So 50 times 20 is a thousand dollars. You're gonna spend a thousand dollars on practice jerseys, and then 85 times 20 will be seventeen hundred dollars on sticks and that will be less than or equal to three thousand so that would be a reasonable solution because you have more uh, sticks and there are players and you have more jerseys and there are players and that's it for number eight